Shuya Marionette is a fantasy anime about a magic school countries at war and cute girls. Jealousy surfaces around the popular male protagonist. An avid viewer desires to be reborn like him. Suddenly, he wakes up from his sleep, expressing his confusion about his surroundings. He recalls watching an anime until falling asleep. Suddenly, he pauses and sees a mirror. A confused and plump figure reflects. His astonishment echoes for not recognizing the man in the mirror. Suddenly, his face starts to become familiar with him. He describes a creepy stare that only gazes at girls, as well as a body similar to a big orc. He recognizes the image of the piggy duke named Slow from his favorite anime. He is perplexed to have been isekai to the fantasy world. Frustration grows as he is stuck in the despised character's body, instead of the protagonist. Suddenly, Charlotte, his attendant, knocks to check if he is awake. Immediately, he recognizes her voice and asks her to enter. She greets Slow with breakfast and her charming smile. Anxiously, he asks her to describe the kind of person he is, explaining that he is only trying to assess himself. Charlotte recites his status as part of a noble family and his influence in his mage class. While he silently recounts his flaws, she adds that others find him unapproachable. Embarrassment fills his face as he remembers. Then Charlotte asks him to eat his breakfast. He remains optimistic, knowing his popularity among anime fans. Given the anime setting, Slow gets cautious and waits for his food to cool down. Charlotte is startled when she hears him make a pig sound, causing her to break the pot. Anxiousness fills her face while she apologizes to her master. Slow tells her not to worry. Fragments of pot float in the air while Slow uses his magic. Silently, he recounts that fans love him because he is a magic genius. He is the first being that the spirit favored. Charlotte thanks him, while Slow asks her to be careful of the shards. However, Charlotte finds his sudden kindness strange. Immediately, he realizes that his nice act makes him suspicious, putting him in deep contemplation. Slow decides to jog in the field. His peers are astonished to see him exercise for the first time. His breath quickens with every step. They try to be careful when talking loudly about him. Another reason fans like his character is because of Charlotte's backstory and his subplot. In a flashback, Charlotte used to be a princess of a fallen kingdom, whom Slow saved from being trafficked, protecting her day and night from threats using his magic. However, the anime started to give her more interaction with the protagonist and she joined his harem. His wasted efforts for her fueled his villain arc, endearing him to fans. His frustration mounts while he runs. He justifies his misdemeanor by being with Charlotte, even if it means defying his own family. Slow disapproves of his character's storyline, so he plans to change his future and fix his appearance. His determination to be with Charlotte boosts him. The sudden increase in Slow's activity levels becomes the talk of his class. His peers note his unusual appearance in the cafeteria. The maid shivers in fear as she delivers his food. Immediately, she excuses herself in a rush, making his classmates think the maid did something wrong. It upsets Slow that even the maids are afraid of him. While eating, he finds the food to taste bland. The cafeteria's meager meal fails to satisfy him, causing him distress about his eating habits. A generous offer to share food arrives at Slow. Vision, who is a Viscount's son and a mob character in the story, introduces himself. Slow is skeptical about him offering food. Vision expresses his thoughtfulness and insists on sharing his meal. Doubts about his intentions cloud Slow's perception, but admittedly, his meal was not enough, prompting him to accept Vision's offer. However, realization strikes him as he almost falls into temptation. Instead, Slow thanked him for his thoughtfulness, displaying his persistence by telling Vision he is full already. While seated, he politely declined his offer. Suddenly, the chair collapses due to Slow's heaviness. His class is astonished and giggles at Slow, Laughter and mockery echo in the cafeteria as he lays on the ground. His annoyed eyes gaze at his peers. He aggressively refuses Vision's persistent offer. Frustrated, he confronts his deceptive yet handsome classmate. Tears of rage display Slow's face as he insists he is satiated already. He makes Vision repeat himself, showing his dominance. In the class, Eru displays her passion while lecturing about spirits to her students. Silently, Slow imagines his old self interrupting her for fantasizing about the spirit but he notes common student boredom during lectures. Eru reminds them that regardless of social status, anyone can master magic. The class is dismissed and students leave the room. Wallowed in self-pity, Slow notes their avoidance of him. Suddenly, Eru asks for his time to talk. Slow asks what she wants. His well-behaved manner and dieting catch his teacher's attention. He receives praise for looking after himself. After acknowledging her compliment, he politely excuses himself. Something suddenly alerts him asking his teacher not to move. His ominous gaze gives Eru anxiety. 
He reaches for his hand in confusion, slowly grabs an invisible stand on her chest. With a mysterious entity in hand, he leaves her perplexed. Apart from that, he catches a wind spirit, reminding it to behave properly. Silently, he notes the spirit's mischievous nature. Despite being in a fantasy world, it is taboo to claim that you can see a spirit. Slow moves on to his martial arts class. Charlotte spies on him and is astonished that he is behaving properly in his class. She pinches herself, thinking she is in a dream. Charlotte also recalls her master's decision to diet and stick to it. While taking notes, she thinks he ate something bad. Enthusiastically, she expresses her support for his master, who tries to be a better person. Additionally, if Slow improves his reputation, she might get a salary increase. Charlotte expresses her excitement for her master. Silently, Slow recounts the anime director's kind words for his character. Despite saving Charlotte, he recounts the protagonist's advantages, but he plans to change his future using his power and knowledge of the storyline. Slow expresses his determination to protect himself and Charlotte. He was vowing to finally confess his love for her. Frustration mounts as Tina, a mage student, can't conjure magic. She is disappointed, unable to call on the spirits because she is only a commoner. Her situation intensifies her anguish. On the campus, Slow is excited for their upcoming practical magic class. He notes to his female classmate that he can't miss his chance, revealing he has something up his sleeve for their lesson. Silently, he is aware of his superiority in using magic in his class. With this, he is positive enough to amaze his peers, but his delusion ends when he is asked who will be his training partner. The class gathers for the lesson's instruction. Roko, who used to be an elite royal knight, addresses his students. He instructs everyone to pair up and report to him their partner's magic weaknesses. The students gather to choose their partners, leaving Slow alone because everyone hates him. He is let down while seeing everyone pair up. Hopeful, he looks for someone he can partner with. Until he sees Tina displaying her enthusiasm, she is dubbed a demon lord for her naughty behavior. Tina also exudes a deceptive appearance, hiding her voluptuous figure, which Slow truly admires and can't take his eyes off. Tina notices his gaze and addresses him. She asks if Slow is looking for a partner, which he confirms. Seeing that she is a freshman, he offers his guidance to her. Tina expresses her excitement. She bows to him to display her respect. Slow is impressed by her figure, but her peers discouraged her from partnering with Slow, calling him disgusting. Slow defends himself in front of them. Tina is confused while he reassures her of his clear intentions. Slow lectures show how important imagination is to manifesting magic. Tina had already tried this but was unsuccessful. In response, he suggests detailing her imagination, giving her an elaborate description of fire and tsunamis as examples. However, he reveals that spirits are not drawn to commoners like her, which she thinks is unfair, expressing her disappointment over fate tied to status. He tries to comfort her by giving examples of commoners mastering magic. The class falls into a somber mood. Tina is discouraged, as there is nothing she can do about her bloodline. Slow tries to encourage her, noting that spirits prefer someone who is honest. She agrees with sadness in her eyes. Slow departs, reminding his peers to stay motivated. He walks around, trying to look for a partner. Suddenly, Vision displays a strained smile while confronting someone. The tension intensifies when his peers mock him for sucking up to Slow. His vision tells him to shut up. Slow sees them and thinks Vision's kindness was just an act. Dramatically, he feels hurt by disappointment. Vision continues to receive hurtful words from his peers. They ridicule him for his underprivileged status. Vision reaches its boiling point and calls upon the spirits. His peers turn anxious, while Vision tries to teach them a lesson. The crowd panics and calls their teacher. With the spirits gathering, Slow notices Vision snapping. Roko witnesses the commotion. He tries to calm him down, but Vision is too outraged. Roko steps in and asks everyone to stay back. Vision recites an incantation as he conjures up a blazing whirlwind. Slow wonders if he will stop his madness. Tina displays an engaged look. Roko spins his wand, noting he can't let a confused heart use magic. Walls of sand suddenly emerge. Everyone is rendered speechless. Vision lies face down after running out of energy. Suddenly, rushing footsteps descend. Slow executes a powerful body splash, crushing Vision. Slow pretends to be a mindless act. Vision lies unconscious on the ground. His peers leave him, noting that he is dangerous, while Tina suddenly runs away from the scene, echoing the words she heard about using magic. She recounts her hard work as a deprived kid. Frustration mounts knowing that a commoner like her can't use magic, but what pisses her off is Vision's careless use of his power. I wonder if he can even swing his wand as many times as she did. Her grip tightens, recounting her motivations for entering the academy. 
She urgently calls on the spirits to express her true self. Her hopelessness causes her to punch the ground. Her frustration echoes as she screams magic. Suddenly, a round object emerges before her. She pauses momentarily. Tina is perplexed after conjuring a golem, thinking she is a genius. Excitement floods her expression, and she thanks the Earth Spirit. Although her magic is still terrible, she strives to improve. Suddenly, she noticed, spying eyes behind her. Tina feels embarrassed learning that Slow saw the whole thing. She is even mortified that it was the foolish noble who caught her. Slow acts nonchalantly. Suddenly, she is astonished to hear his praise. She pauses momentarily while Slow leaves. Her loud scream echoes in the field. In the cafeteria, Slow is greeted while he eats. He sees Vision's poor state. He just moved to a different dorm room. This will save him expenses from living with commoners on the first floor. Vision is aware that his name is already tarnished. The two joke around his situation. His vision reveals that he was really sucking up to him before, but his intention was pure, to confirm if Slow really changed for the better. The latter tries to play dumb, but Vision realizes he was helping him when he snapped the other day. The incident made Vision remember Slow's help in the past. Vision feels like he met his true self, dubbing him the Wind Priest. Slow remains nonchalant. Vision is happy to become his first friend aside from his attendant. Slow just plays it cool in front of Vision. Suddenly, Slow urgently runs to Charlotte and reports to her. He is astonished to finally make a new friend. She checks to see if he is sick. Charlotte suggests that his new friend has ulterior motives. Slow is hurt by her doubtfulness. She becomes possessive, and she takes him to the clinic. He begs her to believe him. The next day, Vision sits with Slow in the cafeteria. They make small talk about the former's new, shared room. Vision thanks him for helping him avoid expulsion. In return, he whispers information beneficial to Slow. A strong outcry resonates in the cafeteria from him. Charlotte urgently insists on following the rules. Slow tried to calm her down, but she said it was wrong. The information was about a magic and eating competition for the upcoming festival, which Slow has no control over. Merchants hold a weekly event behind the cathedral. In the next event, two-person teams eat and disrupt their opponents. The grand prize is a rare beauty potion coveted by every girl, but Slow is more interested in the slim potion. However, they need one male and one female, and no girl will partner with him. Charlotte notes that the competition is for students only unqualifying her as his attendant. She insists that he find one who is a student, but Slow has already tried doing this. Everyone just ignores him upon announcing his desire to participate. Slow convinces her, but she is reluctant. His desperate cry for help is only met with a bewildered gaze. However, Charlotte insists that she is not qualified. Slow says it is fine, and he leverages his authority but she expresses her steadfast resistance. Noting that his abuse of authority will isolate him from others, Charlotte gives him tough love, reminding him of his promise to change. She gives him a smile, expressing her support. Charlotte offers to look for his master's partner. Slow expresses his understanding. He is sorry for pestering her and promises to do better. Her optimism fills the room, suggesting that he asks them nicely. Unfortunately, they failed their first attempt. Her idea is to enhance his tarnished reputation. She advises helping others or gossiping with the girls, but his struggle to approach them hinders him. Unfortunately, Slow's diet progress is very sluggish. His knees hurt when he runs too much. Hopelessness fills the room as he cries. Charlotte clarifies if he really wants the diet potion at all costs. Conflicted, he confirms, but still wants to become a better person. Finally, Charlotte comes to his rescue just once. Astonishment fills him as she confirms her participation. However, she has one condition. Her adherence to the rules is apparent, but he displays his complacency. Charlotte insists on being careful, whispering her request to him during the competition, but his worried face shows how serious her demand is. Left with no choice, he agrees, which pleases Charlotte. They arrive together at the festival, which is filled with many attendees. The accessories excite her, but her budget is already tight. Slow asks her to hurry, or he will leave her behind. A sea of people flowed through the streets. Slow imagines they're on a date while she tells him to stop his pig-like habits. His embarrassed face becomes apparent. Suddenly, someone recognizes him from the crowd. Their hurtful words attack him unprovoked. The bullies confirm their competition entry. They mention that a princess will join, which will hinder Slow's deceitful antics. He looks anxious while they prank him. The bullies run away, accusing him of being a pickpocket. Slow's anxiety intensifies as he denies their accusations. He and Charlotte immediately rush to the venue. The festival starts with Vision as the host, acknowledging the participation of Princess Karina. Slow praises his hosting talent. He and Charlotte get ready for their introductions. Vision proudly introduces him as the all-new Piggy Duke. 
He asks for the crowd to applaud slow. Unfortunately, the crowd aggressively heckled him. But his thick skin is already used to the hate comments. The crowd thinks slow is after the beauty potion. Assuming his inability to diet, they realize he is after the slim potion. Slow is all fired up to win when his stomach suddenly rumbles. They look serious as their opponents are introduced. Princess Alicia and Shuya, the fortune-telling boy, make their grand entrance. Vision concludes the introduction of the 12 teams for the competition. Alicia and Shuya emanate a serious vibe. Slow is astonished to meet the anime's protagonist and main heroine. The competition displays a chaotic scene. Vision annotates a cutthroat contest among participants. When a contestant requests another plate, their opponent will throw a ball to disrupt them. If caught, another plate will be served, followed by another disruption. The competition is more extreme than it sounds. However, Slow seems to find the contest easy. He plays the game with minimal effort, getting a free meal and a slimming potion in one go. Alicia turns her attention to Slow and aims to disrupt him. Vision notes that most male contestants will offer the beauty potion to the princess. Alicia's reputation precedes hers due to her popularity among anime characters and fans. She hates losing and pushes Chuya to keep going. He eats like his life depends on it. Rumor has it that the protagonist's crystal ball is his actual body. Shuya already confirmed their win based on his crystal ball. With Alicia rushing him, he has a hard time keeping up. Suddenly, Slow considers altering his strategy. His aim is to achieve second place. Charlotte carelessly hits his face. He reminds her to stop the friendly fire. Her random destruction causes a waitress to slip. The chaos causes Slow and Charlotte to argue. Silently, he notes about an unpredictable element. Describing Charlotte as an airhead who can't use magic properly, she unintentionally hits him again. Her face is mortified while using Slow's wand, per her condition. She promises to get serious already. Until Charlotte strikes him with her magic, Slow winces in pain. His peers silently talk about him breaking the rules. However, Slow is unbothered and gives all he has. Vision announces that the team princess is starting to catch up. Alicia keeps pushing Shuya, who looks nauseous. The gap between them and Slow rapidly closes. The piggy duke calls Charlotte and asks for her help. She is confused when he asks her to drop the wand. She feels remorseful about her random attacks. Per his request, she pretends to accidentally drop the wand. Slow picks up with hidden intentions for the team princess. He uses alchemy on Shuya while he eats. He looks around, hearing the sound of coins. Alicia is confused while he is distracted. The sound continues to echo in his imagination. Alicia angrily asks him to focus on the competition. Outraged, Shuya does not want to miss a coin to pay off his debt. He blames Alicia for breaking his vase. Annoyance fills her face as she avoids accountability. In an outburst, she shoves the food down his throat. Slow is pleased that his strategy is working. He asks Charlotte to drop the wand again three more times. Without a choice, she obliges. He is pretending to drop it again so he can cheat. He thanks her for obeying. His task starts to make Charlotte feel foolish. Slow notes are the perfect time for his plan. He stops eating to pace himself. Confident that the contest will end soon, he asks Charlotte to rest. While they rest, a cheer for Slow echoes from the crowd. The voice claims his imminent victory. Slow and the rest are astonished. Vision announces his surprise and notes the female voice. Doubtful murmurs resound in the crowd. Panic strikes him as he explains it to Charlotte. Vision displays his obvious bias towards Slow, which the crowd dissents from. Charlotte is shocked. Despite the support, he still aims for second place. But Slow feels good to be supported. They turn their attention to the princess team, only to see Shuya lose consciousness from overfeeding. The other teams give up as well. Against his will, Slow is declared the winner. The beauty potion is handed over to him as his prize. Vision assumes he will give the potion to Charlotte instead. Slow feels down as the slimming potion is awarded second place. Slow accepts his misfortune and decides to give the potion to Charlotte. He sighs while displaying his optimism. However, Charlotte comes to him with a proposal. In the forest, Slow meets with Alicia for a rendezvous. She disapproves of his idea to diet instantly with a magic potion. She notes angrily that his decision to change was long overdue. Slow agrees but Charlotte rephrases that it is useless. Her rage intensifies as she reminds Slow his bad reputation. Nonchalantly, he acknowledges her insult. Charlotte brings up their hurtful past and reminds him of his cruelty toward her. Slow keeps his cool while addressing her as his ex fiance Extremely irritated, she commands him not to call her that. Slow takes responsibility for his bad behavior in the past. Alicia fears everyone liking Slow, but he sees it as impossible. He says sorry, but she tells him not to bother. Alicia asks him to finish their deal before anybody sees them. 
She will give the potion to him in exchange for his possessions. Her aggression fills her face while she points her wand. In return, Alicia asks him to trade his wand, but Slow is reluctant, causing Alicia's disappointment. She ensures that he takes care of his wand. Deep in his thoughts, he remembers a jewel he gave her long ago. Nostalgia fills the atmosphere around them. Suddenly, she gets annoyed by him. Alicia grips the box of potion in annoyance, then suddenly throwing the fragile item inside towards Slow. The potion drops to the ground. She blames her aggression on his unreasonable demands, leaving Slow startled. Alicia gives him serious advice to take care of his attendant and not mess up again. After saying her piece, she exits empty-handed. Slow is relieved to possess the slimming potion. Noting the last time he spoke with her, Charlotte appears and checks his status. Excitement fills the atmosphere for a successful trade. He recounts Charlotte convincing him to exchange his prize with her. Her curiosity makes her ask him what they talked about. Slow recounts Alicia's angry look. He is candid about their unpleasant encounter. Charlotte asks to see the slimming potion. She holds the box and promises to be careful. Upon opening, a specimen displays inside the potion, which creeps her out. She throws the bottle out of fear. In a panic, Slow tries to catch the potion, but he misses, causing the bottle with the fat grub monster to break. Knowing Charlotte, he already expected this accident to happen. She is remorseful about her clumsiness. Slow tries to comfort her while she blames herself. Slow tells her that participating in the contest with her is already enough. He asks her to stop crying. Charlotte listens to him. Anyway, his participation would not be possible without her. For him, making memories with her is enough. Slow hears her say something. She holds her hands and makes her decision. Charlotte promises to create a new slimming potion for him, leaving Slow astonished by her plan. Slow wakes up to a beautiful morning while gazing through the window. He admires the air and the fantasy world. He is quenched after hydrating himself. Suddenly, he sees a dark liquid which is a result of Charlotte's experiment. Her culinary skills could be fatal. He imagines being in survival mode and starving to death. His serious eyes gazed at the dark liquid that Charlotte had prepared. He decides to drink it for her. Immediately, he passes out while she reminds him of his morning run. After recovering, Slow starts his regular exercise. He warms up first. Suddenly, Tina arrives and greets him. She enthusiastically thanks him for helping her use magic. Tina hides in the forest to train her magic, where no one sees her. Slow notes mean they think the same. The two officially introduce themselves, but Slow realizes she knows him already. She is surprised that he knew she cheered for him the other day. Her huge voice was a giveaway for him. When the crowd looked at her, she immediately exited the field. She vows to cheer for him since he is her magic master. He pretends to be clueless, so she reminds him. He sulks, thinking she called her an idiot before, but she clarifies that she thinks differently about him. As a commoner who uses magic, she becomes popular, but her peers doubted her claim that Slow taught her due to his bad reputation. Although the hate train is not new to Slow, nonetheless, Tina is grateful for him and ignores his bad reputation, but her talking to him is already enough for Slow. Suddenly, she feels the need to return the favor. Aside from cheering for him, Tina vows to help him. Silently, he suspects that the Earth Spirit lent her power after he spoke to her. Carefully, he thinks about what he wants, until something hits his mind. Back to exercising, he starts appreciating running and his body adjusts. He can't wait to lose all his fat. Charlotte gives him a towel, and they talk about his significant progress. Revulsion fills him when she hands him her own slim potion, but Slow still drinks it. Suddenly, she notices Tina, who looks like she just got out of bed. Charlotte looks at Slow with seriousness. While observing Tina's chest, Charlotte notes that she is better than Alicia. She expresses her disbelief at seeing her master with a female companion. Tina recognizes her as Slow's attendant. She pauses momentarily. Tina gushes over her and notes that she owes Slow so much. Tina implies that her relationship with Slow is purely professional. He observes them with confusion. Tina feels unworthy of being Slow's friend given her commoner status. Charlotte asks if she needs something from her master. Tina confirms. She shows a broken magic made sculpture. Charlotte gives Slow a presumptuous look. He shyly reiterates his desire to improve his reputation. As an example, he eats Charlotte's disgusting dishes. Suddenly, Tina shares about her maid friend's problem. Headmaster Mozo owns the sculpture in a private guest room, but the item was already broken when she saw it. She took the sculpture out of panic. The maid fears being blamed, which is why Tina wonders if Slow can fix it. He looks at the item quickly. The only damage is the broken wing. He thinks it is possible to fix it, but not as good as before. Silently, Slow is impressed to recognize the antique item. 
Charlotte recounts him creating the same item for Alicia. Tina is shocked, while Slow notes that magic is all he has. She expresses her interest in magic-crafted items, but they fix the antique sculpture first. Strands of light surround the item while he swings his wand. He uses fire and water magic to attach the broken wing. Tina is rendered speechless. Quietly, Slow notices her attentiveness, wondering if she will grasp it soon. His magic continues to remold the broken item. The process is finally done. Tina plans to use her earth magic to find the missing fragments, but the repair is flawless thanks to Slow's impressive skills. His humility is evident as he downplays his power. She thanks him for fixing her friend's problem. Slow is pleased to be useful. Silently, he empathizes with commoners and maids who stick together, given their status. Tina suddenly gets curious about Slow's magic proficiency. She asks if Charlotte is also skilled in magic. Reluctance fills Charlotte's face. It shows that Tina did not see her performance during the contest. Tina also notes the intense training for the attendants. She expresses her excitement as Charlotte confirms. Tina also notes that she does not carry a wand. Charlotte confidently lies and says that she does not need it. She looks at Slow and scares him into agreeing with her. Tina looks up to her, assuming she is a commoner like her. Slow notices her confusion. Surprised, Tina points to the apron with a dragon embroidery like the chef's. Apparently, nobles who become attendants don't help in the kitchen. Suspicion fills Tina's face when Slow urgently asks Charlotte to return to the kitchen. Nobody really knows Charlotte's origin, so he tries to protect her. Slow makes an excuse for Tina, expressing his sigh of relief. Since his exercise is done, he plans to go to his class, but Tina still has something to say to him. Her maid friends appear with joyful faces. Tina thanks him for concocting a skincare potion for her friends. He reminds her to hide the potion from anyone. The girls acknowledge his reminder. They express their remorse for judging him. Slow is mobbed by the girls. Tina asks for a share of the potion, but he resists. He urgently asks the maids to give Tina some. Suddenly, the atmosphere turns dark when Rocco approaches Slow. He is startled at getting busted immediately. Slow explains himself about the potion, but Rocco doesn't care about it. Stunning Slow. His teacher reveals that his father, the headmaster, summoned him. Slow turns a serious face. Rocco gives him directions to the office and he leaves. Slow realizes the moment as a spin-off that he saw in the anime. Mozo summons him to give him new tasks to become a savior. His protagonist's event begins. Alicia sees Shuyer rushing off at the start of class. She worries about him failing the class and being mocked. In the academy, Slow climbs very long stairs, causing his feet to turn sore. Confusion fills the air when Slow and Shuya meet. They realize they were called for the same reason. Shuya is nervous upon hearing a certain rumor. Curiosity brims his face. The headmaster reportedly summons top students to recommend them for higher positions. The two argue about their performances in class. Their anxiousness stops them from opening the door. Suddenly, the headmaster notices a commotion. Shuya rigidly introduces his presence. Slow also informs the headmaster of his attendance, noting his slender version. A restrained laugh echoes from the room. The headmaster permits them to enter. The two look anxious. Mozo notes their tardiness. He asks if they get along after hearing their commotion. The two immediately deny their friendship. Mozo notes that they will become closer the more they fight. Chairs float while he asks them to sit. Confusion among both students surfaced about Slow's attendance. Mozo confirms while asking Shuya about his crystal ball. Immediately, he confirms hearing voices from the ball. The headmaster tests him by telling him the reason he calls him. Shuya obediently follows him. He concentrates and hears a voice, warning about an unknown presence. Mozo was right to summon him while observing his vague vision. Shuya explains that sometimes he gets strange answers from the crystal ball. Mozo confirms he is not entirely wrong, but his skill is inferior to Slow's. Shuya is insulted by the headmaster's feedback, slowly and confidently confirms Mozo's comment. The headmaster notes his confidence. He finds his directness similar to that of his father, noting his infamy despite being the future duke. Slow disappoints his family's expectations of him as the wind priest's reincarnation. Shuya is astonished by the headmaster's revelation. Slow used to be a prodigy at a young age, but he becomes a disgrace to his family. Slow sarcastically mentions losing his power a few years ago. Mozo notes his efforts to improve himself, mentioning the events that happened while he was away. The headmaster asks him to fill him in. Slow obeys his request. He keeps him up to speed. Mozo is pleased that the students are having fun, noting that they welcome anyone regardless of social status, emphasizing the value of diversity and individuality. He hints at involvement with troublemakers, clarifying the presence of a spy in the academy. Shuya loudly expresses his shock. 
the academy is supposed to be a safe place for future leaders who are prone to attacks, but a break-in still occurred despite their tight security. So far, the authorities have no leads yet. Slow clarifies their qualifications to get involved in the matter. Shuya feels insulted, giving Mozo a laugh. He addresses Shuya and notes his flawless prophecies. The latter displays humility in front of the headmaster. While Slow was recommended by Roko, his rescue of Vision, who went mad, became a topic among teachers, thinking no one would notice his actions after exiting. He labels him as a troublemaker advocating for his peers. His natural talent impressed his teacher. His humility about his heroic act was noted, saving his father from shame. Mozo also notes his composure and foresight. He asks him for a suggestion. Slow suggests investigating the intruders independently. Shuya disagrees and leaves the job to the authorities, but the spy will be cautious around them. However, the mole will lower his guard around troublemakers like them. Shuya agrees with him. Moza reveals that the royal knights are secretly involved, per his request. The request was accepted by Mozo's cardinal friend. Due to the fear of the other empire's recent move, they granted his request. The royal knights will arrive in a few days. Mozo hopes to capture the mole immediately. He also requests reports about suspicious activities. Slow and Shuya display their commitment to the task. Eru lectures the class about the elemental spirits. They help develop countries and have a special bond with the royal family. She stops and begs the sleeping students to listen. Slow thinks about how to start investigating. While the lecture continues, he notes the spy's audacity to infiltrate them. He even caused a shock with the headmaster. If they follow the anime timeline, then Slow knows the intruder. He is the faceless mercenary hired by the Dostal Empire. He can change his face using a magical item. In the anime's scene, the spy asks him for confidential details. That said, the faceless mercenary has begun mobilizing. Suddenly, Alicia rouses when her country is mentioned. Slow anticipates her reaction. Eru continues her lecture about her country's bond with the water spirit. Silently, Slow recounts the spy's obsession with Alicia, but he never learns his identity until his exile from his country. He notes another problem. The spy can also naturally blend in without a trace. Fortunately, that event has not arrived in the anime yet. Suspicions run through his head about the spy's true objective. Suddenly, a question is raised in the class. Vision clarifies the last time that the wind spirit was seen. Eru answers him, while Slow silently worries about the imminent danger. Suddenly, a complaint is raised about Shuya's distracting snores. After class, he catches up with Slow, but the latter ignores him. The two engage in a conversation. Shuya asks how he plans to look for the intruder, but Slow's complacency annoys him. He turns serious and asks Shuya to listen. Their unexpected closeness could arouse suspicion from the spy. Shuya looks reluctant, but he is astonished when Slow asks if his crystal is just a decoration. He leaves him while Shuya stands behind him. He holds his crystal ball, astonished. Silently, Slow feels compassionate about Shuya, who monitored the campus all night. He anticipates a bombing attack, following the anime's timeline. He finds clues to prove that the faceless mercenary is the actual intruder. The students take their lunch at the cafeteria. While Slow works outside, the wind spirit accompanies him while displaying a menacing look. He uses a spell to confirm the intruder's identity in the anime. His objective must be to gather intelligence before he attacks. He decides to return at night to destroy the intruder's traps. Slow informs the headmaster to not involve Shuya as much. But first, he has a belly to fill. Balls of magic grab his attention. He thinks it is a great opportunity to test his power in this world. He decides to stop acting like a coward while addressing his old piggy duke. Perplexity fills his face at the cafeteria. The maids present a buffet of meals. In addition, his dessert arrives. Slow is astonished to see his food get mixed up. The maids express their gratitude to Slow for the potion. Slow realizes they are the intruder's next target. While eating, Tina notes that he is amazing. She greets Slow and sits with him. Slow expresses his confusion while Tina explains that all seats are taken. Vision notices Slow sitting with a girl. At first, he did not notice it was Vision dressed as a waiter. He gazes at the huge pile of food. He asks if Slow stops dieting, but he cites it as a gesture from the maids. Vision brings up the secret potion, surprising Slow and Tina, revealing that he overheard the maids talking. This only proves that Slow's reputation is improving. Slow is informed about the cafeteria's new staff. He assumes that the new staff member is an airhead, only to find out it was Charlotte who just tripped. Slow can't believe his eyes. Tina and Vision express their admiration for her in a maid dress. Slow is worried as he approaches Charlotte, having difficulty. They give her a hand. Slow calls Vision. 
He asks him for a favor about her work. Charlotte is shocked to see her master's pile of food. He explains it but she reminds him to control himself. Alicia is rendered speechless. Her doubtful voice thinks he has ulterior motives for helping others. Alicia gives a stern look. Night falls, while his determination to catch the spy echoes. He observes the women's dorm, the main gate, and graffiti on the wall. Slow notes that the faceless guy can choose anywhere he likes. He scours through the bushes, until he sees a magic formation for summoning water-type dolls. This power overwhelms Shuya, based on the anime. The dark magic component makes it more ferocious. He winces in pain upon touching. The magic will explode when it is erased, but he plans to modify it and destroy it internally. While performing magic, Slow thinks he has accomplished a lot by the time team help arrives. Galloping horses surge through the ground. Exhausted knights note the problem's severity while moving all night. They plan to recruit a talented magician if they see one. The knights anticipate seeing Slow call him a fallen child. Unpleasant remarks are made about Slow. Captain Oliver calls them out and takes a shortcut. The knights acknowledge his remarks. He expresses the urgency of arriving earlier. Curiosity builds around Slow while he sneaks out every morning. Something catches her attention. Alicia notices a warding magic and investigates further. She decides to find proof of his infamy to get him expelled. The magic formation has been detonated already. Astonishment fills the air as most of the magic formations are erased. The faceless intruder realizes that the plans were compromised and decides to escape, contemplating using the remaining traps to cause chaos. Alicia arrives and questions the intruder, only to witness Eru standing in a smoky forest. Noting this, she finds the perfect hostage. Eru, who is the faceless intruder, gives an ominous gaze. While being held hostage, Alicia warns her about betraying the academy. Eru chuckles at her remarks, giving Alicia a sarcastic response. She notes that most students, including her, were easy to fool. Alicia urgently questions her real identity and intentions. Eru notes her popularity as faceless in the underworld. With a menacing gaze, she politely asks Alicia to follow her orders, but the princess refuses her. Eru sarcastically informs her of the consequences if she disobeys. Alicia feels cornered. The Faceless plans to use her to escape the school premises. Alicia warns her that everyone from Doris will capture her, but Eru will simply change her appearance and identity. Silently, she is unbothered by her pursuers. What bothers her is the person who destroyed her traps. She doubts it is one of the school officials. The modification of her magic circle troubles her the most, noting it was no easy task. She feels insulted that her skills were belittled. At Dennings, an urgent voice calls slow. Charlotte tells him about the letter from his family. He asks her what the letter says. She reads with a disapproving expression. His family got angry and told him to stop lying. Slow asks her what she wrote in the report. Her letter contains Slow's small wins and good deeds recently. However, they did not believe her and threatened to lower her salary. She is disheartened thinking about her master's efforts. Slow feels bad about her and how his family treated her. He tries to encourage her. However, her gloomy mood fills the air. His eyes turn to the slim potion. She slowly chugs the drink, thinking it would cheer her up. Silently, he notes that he is getting used to the drink. Her eyes lit up after Slow drank all the potion she did. He even asks for a refill. Suddenly, she remembers creating a new slime potion for him. Her mouth slips and she notes the secrecy of the details. Slow is pleased that she already feels better. His time to exercise has arrived. Charlotte asks to use his desk before he leaves. She wants to write back to his family, telling them she was not lying. Slow feels secure about her and focuses on dieting. Charlotte thinks of providing hard evidence as proof. While reaching for her tea, the cup handle breaks. Her anxiousness fills the room, thinking it is bad luck. Silently, Eru notes her barely successful mission to infiltrate the academy. Suddenly, something strikes her attention. Noting the presence of Alicia's friend, Shuya waves and calls her. He asks what is going on. Eru lies about accompanying Alicia to a royal transport. He clarifies if they got permission to leave so early in the morning. Alicia chimes in, saying royalties do not need it. He offers to join them as a guard, noting the dangers surrounding the academy. He expresses his anxiousness, but Alicia raises her voice and stops him. Her eyes look sad as she reminds him of his alchemy class. She panics as he needs to prioritize it. Urgently, he exits the scene. Eru notes her thoughtfulness for her friends. Silently, Eru still thinks her cover is hidden from Shuya. She notes his fortune-telling skills, but he does not have the ability to hijack her ability. Alicia confidently tells her to get moving. She gives the princess a menacing look. Suddenly, Slow arrives at their location. They greet each other. Eru gives a different excuse this time. She slowly gazes at Alicia. He gets past the two girls. Alicia squeezes her skirt and stops him. 
Nonchalantly, she asks him what she wants. She notes his persistence to lose weight. She expresses her doubts about him while he ignores her. The two argue about who causes more trouble. Arrow interrupts, expressing the urgency to get moving. Before they leave, Alicia gives him a warning. Noticing a bad wind afoot, she asks him to be careful while running. Although the weather looks fine, he just thanks her. The two part ways. Eru thinks she still has lingering feelings for her ex fiance Silently, Alicia hopes he notices the faceless suspects that she wants him to save her. However, she doubts that Slow will notice her subtle attempt. But she is wrong as Slow raises his wand and calls Alicia. Eru is stunned. Slow orders her to move back. Slow causes a massive explosion toward Eru. She notes the high-level earthen blast skill without incantation. Alicia runs toward her, full of hope. She believes that Slow noticed her safe word, but he seems to forget about it. Slow is impressed that Alicia still remembers. Eru blows the smoke away from the explosion. She is outraged by his attack. Slow asks her to get Roko. Eru thought they were on bad terms. Slow confirms, finding the situation obvious. His ominous energy is displayed while giving the faceless a warning, noting that Alicia would never call his name without a pig insult. The class notices an explosion within the forest. Slow and Eru engage in a fierce fight. Eru launches glacial shards, while Slow counters them with a storm blade. The area was bombed with a massive explosion. The class wonders if they have practical lessons. They are confused to see Eru, who is not in charge of said class. Their astonishment intensifies upon seeing Slow's impressive moves. Slowly he urgently warns his peers of Eru's real identity. His peers immediately join and note that the fight is only for nobles. But sharp glacial shards land their way, causing them to run in fear. However, Eru did not intend to target the students. Slow looks serious while she notes her failed plan to escape. She casts a spell and finds a one-on-one -on -one battle ideal for her. She splashes a giant wave and focuses on her escape. She turns and gets moving. Suddenly, a towering boulder blocks her way. Slow grins and does not let her escape. She looks confidently at him and even cracks a joke. Explosions continue to echo in the academy. Roko thinks there is a practical lesson happening, until an urgent voice calls him. Alicia looks exhausted from running. He asks her what is going on. She tries to gather her words. She urgently asks him to save Slow. He grabs her in response and questions her about what happened. His face displays remorse for missing the faceless identity. He orders his students to call the headmaster. Roko and Alicia go to the battle scene. Shuya is astonished to see Alicia. The battlefield turns muddy because of Eru and Slow's magic. The two engage in verbal sparring. Slow declares that her journey ends with him, but she just responds with a chuckle. Eru warns him of her tricks up her sleeve. She pulls up a potion from her cloak. A sudden explosion releases a thick smoke. The battlefield is filled with plumes. The students suffocate and are unable to see. Eru uses an item that spreads a mist, sealing their senses. If Slow blows the fine spray, casualties will increase. Suddenly, a roaring sound echoes above her, slowly sucking up the mist instead by creating a vacuum. She assumed that he was a reckless fighter, but Eru was wrong and her expectations were exceeded. Slow takes the situation lightly by cracking a joke. Eru expresses her annoyance. She creates a magic spell and warns him to take his grin off his face. Eru launches bullet rain towards Slow, but he confidently charged instead. One raindrop slips his cloth. If he had not lost weight, that attack would have been bad. Slow is cautious with his first battle since being isekai'd into the anime world. Eru continues to throw glacial blades. Slow holds the battle and waits for the academy's powerful mage. A concerned voice calls slowly. Roko finally arrives with Alicia. Slow asks his teacher to imprison him and Eru, but he immediately refuses. Slow urgently explains that it is to stop her escape. While casting a spell, Roko makes a lighthearted comment. He conjures an isolating ball of lightning. Eru can't believe he actually followed his student. Slow grins as he corners the faceless. He expresses his confidence. She tries to ask Slow to move away, but he refuses, until she loses her mind and screams loudly. The class watches while the intense fight continues. Eru tirelessly conjures up sharp walls of ice. While Slow praises her skills, he even thinks she was a former noble. While fighting, Eru silently recounts her impressive resume, but she can't believe she was cornered by a student. Among the crowd, Shuya is remorseful for failing to notice the danger. How can he save a school when he can't even help a friend? Vision praises Slow, who is dubbed the Wind Priest. He knows a lot about him since he is a friend. Shuya can't believe his ability, which the headmaster mentions. Vision is astonished that he does not know about Slow's past. Shuya clenches his teeth as he gazes at him. Vision notes that his fighting should say it all. 
the main characters witness the Piggy Duke's impressive skills. Skuya feels the need to step in, but Roko stops him before he does something foolish. Shuya is pissed off. The intense fight continues before him. While barely holding the barrier, Roko is impressed by Slow. Eru launches an icy lance, but she is astonished that it misfired. Pissed off, Eru conjures a dark energy around her, but she is too obvious for Slow who uses sparkling radiance. Silently, Eru is astonished by him and thinks he is used to life and death battles. Slow attacks her with a whirling wind, but the Faceless jumps through the air to dodge. She steps on top of a thin pole. She concedes and acknowledges that he is stronger than her. With Roko supporting him, she has no chance of victory. Eru activates a massive magic circle, like her life depends on it. She recites an incantation and her surroundings freeze within her reach. Eru displays an icy gaze with her massive spell. As the battle unfolds, a deeper glimpse of Slow's backstory is explored. The anime is actually his own tragic story, if viewed from his perspective. He faces the Herculean task of protecting Charlotte and her bloodline from discovery. Despite his hardships, he continues to defend her behind the scenes. On the battlefield, Slow gazes at a massive sphere of ice. He becomes extra cautious about an imminent danger. Astonished, he is impressed to see Eru's trump card. He notes her persistence to beat him at all costs. He can't break the barrier due to the swarm of spirits that gathered. Even if he focuses his power on a single point, it will not be enough. Suddenly, something strikes his mind. He asks the wind spirit for help. He promises not to get in his way anymore. The spirit gladly agrees. His energy surges as the spirit lends him power. Eru's energy drains. She holds on to her power just a little longer. Silently, she observes Slow's persistence and attempts to break her barrier. Her face turns mad as she finishes her spell. An incantation echoes within her barrier. Slowly, calmly, inhales. With his intense gaze, he gets himself into position. He shoots like a sniper, piercing Eru's barrier, making a tiny hole. She mocks his attack, thinking it was useless. Eru bids slow an eternal farewell. Suddenly, she trips. The wind spirit penetrates the barrier, astonishing her. Slow notes indicate that it was a real wind prank. Eru falls from her magic circle. Slow displays a relieved expression. The icy magic circle breaks. Eru lies on the ground. Slow points his wand at her neck, noting her checkmate. He commands her to undo her transformation. The Faceless surrenders and transforms into her real form. The two engage in yet another round of verbal sparring. He reaffirms his status in response to Eru's inquiry about his identity. He notes that he should not be her real opponent. Roko comes to the scene, retraining Eru. The headmaster arrives late. Roko presents the spy to Mozo. He is astonished to know she can use transformation magic. They note the big criminal that they caught. He orders her restraint. The crowd is in a frenzy with praise for Slow's magic skills. The headmaster notes the student's noise. Slow displays his humility as they thank him. Suddenly, someone calls him. Shuya and Alicia approach him. Slowly check on them. Suddenly, Shuya praises him while he looks down. He seems to wallow in self-pity. But Shuya is astonished when Slow emphasizes his efforts pertaining to his fortune-telling skill. In exchange, it is his job as the piggy dupe to fight and get dirty. Shuya reiterates his gratitude for him. Alicia interrupts their conversation. She thanks him until an astonished voice arrives at the scene. The Royal Knights appear at the academy. Alicia feels down as she misses her moment. The headmaster displays his respect for Captain Oliver. He asks for the details of the intense event. The headmaster points to the faceless being restrained. Oliver is astonished to see the mercenary in Roko's possession. Knowing his former colleague's ability, he doubts that Roko defeated her. Based on his expression, he looks disappointed. Oliver is eager to know and asks if it was the headmaster. But Mozo shakes his head. He mentions that it can be hard to notice due to his diet. Oliver stops him from beating around the bush. Mozo points at the guy holding a wand with the Denning family crest. Astonishment fills Oliver's face. The crowd surrounds Slow, showering him with praise. After the fight, Slow feels exhausted. He recounts the strange feeling of being praised by his peers. During interrogation, his loud stomach rumbled to relieve the stress from the fight. He finds something to eat. He smells like a feast from his room. His drooling face enters. He arrives at Charlotte sleeping. She rouses and greets her master. Slow asks about the feast. After hearing about his victory, she decided to celebrate with him. She then turns to raise Ellie, their pet cat. Slow notes her rare appearance in his room. She asks him not to bully her. He promises her to behave while Ellie steps away. Charlotte prepares the table quickly. He pauses momentarily until a ruckus happens. Charlotte suddenly slips. She picks up the pieces and notes her carelessness. Charlotte apologizes while her hand shakes. 
she slowly gazes at her, then offers her to take a seat. He tells her not to worry, slowly clears his throat, then he proceeds to fill her in on the happenings. He continues to reassure her. Whatever happens, he tries to make her feel safe. He recounts the years since they met. His thoughtfulness displays knowing how easily she gets scared. Charlotte laughs her anxiety out. She thought that the school was safe. Despite being an outsider, she notes that every day was peaceful. Fear consumed her when she heard about the incident. She was brought to a flashback in her old castle. Thinking that a safe and peaceful place does not really exist, Charlotte feels alone, noting that it is not like her. She apologizes for her somber mood when they should be celebrating. Charlotte asks about Alicia, and he tells her she is safe and perky. Reluctantly, she tries to ask him but she stops herself. Silently, she wonders if he'd save her if she were Alicia. He foresees and affirms it. Slow elaborates that he will drop everything just to save her. He recounts meeting her for the first time with trauma in her eyes. Slow apologizes for momentarily forgetting her fear. She insists that he is not at fault. He expresses his gratitude to her for sticking with him, and he wants her by his side forever, promising to protect her. Charlotte is rendered speechless. He swears in front of the delicious food. She is perplexed. He tries to gather his thoughts. Suddenly, she runs away. The door slams on his face. He is remorseful about the words he said. Slow asks the wind spirit if he is angry for wanting to change. If the hated piggy duke disappears, he wonders if he can still protect her. However, he wants to do things differently. Ellie, who is also the wind spirit, talks to him. Noting that she has been watching over him for 10 years, he sacrificed everything and she feels sorry for him. The wind spirit seems to get used to being a cat and forgets to talk. She thanks her for saving her and Charlotte. Leading Charlotte to their land was not a mistake. With his resolve, Ellie suggests doing as he likes. Charlotte seems to have returned. The wind spirit decides to rest for a while. Slow recounts her anger that almost destroyed the world and now chills on the table. In the Denning family, attendants need to match their skills with their masters. With Charlotte's state, they can be separated soon. He contemplates the imminent danger afoot that concerns the world. He notes that Charlotte's fear will always be triggered. Suddenly, she returns and has something to say to him. She wants to also stay by his side as his aide. Charlotte asks him to teach her magic like Tina. She even promises to help him with his diet. That is why she brought him a new slim potion. She passionately tells him that he will become thin in an instant. Disgust displays itself in Slow and Ellie's faces. The smell is too much for them to bear. Silently, he feels hopeful for a change to happen despite the unknown future. He promises to protect Charlotte no matter what. In the academy, a letter from the cardinal reads, the headmaster notes a troublesome issue. While in his study, Slow addresses someone's disapproval of Charlotte becoming his aide. In the Denning family, the aide needs to be well versed in magic and combat. That said, Charlotte seems unqualified for the position. Slow asks Sleva, who is his father's favorite. He tells him that Charlotte and he are incompatible since he is special. Slow agrees, which is why he made him a wing of the Twin Knights. Silva clarifies if she is as special to Slow as he is. He confirms. If possible, Slow wants her by his side at all times. But for the times he can't, he will leave her by Silva's side. Slow is deep in his thoughts while Tina calls him. She notes his spaced out mood. He reveals a nostalgic face in his dreams. She thought he was a forward-looking type of person. Suddenly, he is perplexed by the amount of food on their table. Tina explains that their classmates kept offering him food. After his victory against the Faceless, Slow became popular. He pauses for a bit. Reluctance fills his face as he realizes they want to get on his side. Although he feels bad for their offerings to go to waste, silently he notes his newly bought size down uniform. He thinks a little meat will not hurt. Until something strikes his mind, he imagines Charlotte getting mad again. But she will not notice since she is very busy. Charlotte stands out among other maids while serving the students. Lately, she makes fewer mistakes and provides more help. Tina notes that it is nice to be beautiful and asks slow, but his worries occupy him. He can't even touch his food. Suddenly, his face slams against the table. Wallowed in self-pity, he thinks he is a coward, but Tina tries to encourage him. His situation puts things into perspective for Tina as a commoner. He asks her a question. Slow asks if Tina has ever been in love. She checks if he has a fever, then moves closer to Slow. Tina is perplexed by his mood. She raises her voice upon realizing he worries about a crush. He tries to calm her down and explains that it was only a hypothetical question. Tina thinks about it, but she is clueless, citing that she has no time for love. Even until she enters the academy, her focus is on her studies and magic. Suddenly, she feels jealous about nobles who just fool around. Slow tells her it is not always the case. 
While Vision witnesses a rare sight, he asks if he can clear their table. Vision compliments Slow's figure. Although he politely asked him to start addressing him properly, Tina notes that school utilities have an appealing salary, and she wants to work too, but Slow reminds her of her limited time. Suddenly, it looks like Charlotte is in trouble. Vision offers to take care, but Slow stands up. However, he realizes it will make things complicated. Vision agrees and expresses his understanding to keep his aid in check. Although Slow has a guest, Alicia stands on the side and gazes at Slow. Tina is astonished. Slowly and reluctantly asks her what she wants. She asks him to follow her per the headmaster's request. Confusion displays in Slow's face. At that time, he had no idea what Mozo wanted from him. All he expected was the beginning of a new trial. Slow calls the headmaster with an anxious reaction, while Alicia is astonished. Mozo pauses a bit. Slow can't understand why he needs to participate in the Guardian Thelion. The event is meant to select the next generation's Guardian Knight. Alicia asks why he wants to send Slow. He thinks it was because of the incident with the Faceless. Additionally, the Cardinal, who commands the Royal Knights, has beef with the Denning House, but he wonders why Alicia is with him. Mozo explains the complicated situation. After the Faceless incident, they had to review the Academy's security. The school officials searched the forest until they found the long-lost labyrinth. Slow and Alicia are stunned. Slow apologizes for his father's shortcoming, since eliminating monsters is their job. Mozo continues and says that the military prepares for the Dostal Empire's invasion. Alicia is surprised that Slow apologized for his family's failure. Mozo reveals the problem with the event's location. It seems that the Cardinal wants to hold the trial in the labyrinth. The letter confirms his story and provides additional news. Slow is stunned. Mozo informs us that Princess Karina will be admitted to the Academy for a while. Alicia anticipates it will cause a stir. Despite her introvertedness, Mozo thinks she needs to cooperate with the event. Her parents want her to connect with educators of the Cardinal's generation. Additionally, the labyrinth's location will cause the Denning House's criticism. Although they seem to have strayed from the original topic, Mozo explains the selection process for the Guardian. The prelims happen in a few places in the country. The closest is in the city of Yolam. Mozo asks if he has ever heard of the name Volji. He recalls thieves murdering a royal in Sacrista, Alicia's hometown. In a burglary and fierce exchange of magic, the retired royal met his demise. They escape Sacrista's military and hide in Yolam City. So the purpose of holding the prelims in Yolam is to eliminate the group. That is why Alicia also wants to join. Slow understands the situation given its relevance to Alicia. Mozo asks her once again for her commitment. Without thinking twice, Alicia confirms. She is determined to bring justice to her family. Alicia confirms her readiness for the danger. Immersed in his thoughts, Slow is impressed by Alicia's resolve, which does not waver. Mozo understands. However, Slow's situation is unique since the Academy can't back his house up, so his participation is optional. Slow thinks carefully. Alicia is surprised by his answer to go. He notes that he can't refuse the royal family's will anyway. Knowing Alicia, he can't leave her alone. Probably the reason why Mozo called him as well. The headmaster says they will proceed and keep everything confidential. Slow shivers as Mozo says that his father might hear of the situation soon. The headmaster will contact them about their departure. Slow and Alicia exit Mozo's office. The latter recalls the rumors. According to Shuya, if they are called to Mozo's office, it means that they will do the royal's work. He is amused by the rumor. Although he can't say it is wrong entirely, he recounts the time he recommended a student to become a royal knight. Until this day, he is not sure if he did the right thing. Slowly, Alicia pauses momentarily. In the classroom, Roko takes over for Eru's class. He tells the students to ditch their books for a practical class. Everyone thinks Eru's class was better. But back in Roko's time, every day there were mock battles and no books. Slow expresses his disinterest. He notes that Roko just shares his life experiences in class. With this, the teacher emphasizes the importance of his lectures. He points to a shock Shuya, citing that he is registered in an adventurer guild. Roko mentions his D rank. Shuya slams the table citing the violation of privacy law. The teacher admires him for having ambition, unlike his pampered classmates. He grins as he gives them a really special introduction. For their class, they will observe a mock battle. Shuyu will partner with Vision. Slow seems to enjoy the happenings. Alicia gets closer to him while their peers are occupied. She asks him why he did not refuse the headmaster. Slow explains that the Cardinal's order is the same as the royal family. That is why he can't refuse. Although he does not care, since they will pin anything on him as a denning. Alicia notes that the Duke will give him an earful. 
which Slow agrees, but he thinks it is good for his father to owe him one. His scheming habit never changes. Slow throws the question back to Alicia, citing the murderous targets. She reiterates the relevance of the case to her family and brings justice. Slow mentions that she has not even met her relatives once. Alicia is astonished that he knows. She starts to argue with him. The class looks at the two of them. Alicia runs away in embarrassment. Suddenly, she trips. He wonders if she will be okay. After class, Vision rants to Slow about Rocco. Even if he concedes, he just got beaten up and abused verbally. Suddenly, he asks him about going to the headmaster's office. Slow looks anxious when he is asked about the Royal Knights. He shakes while Vision mentions the rumor, and his face is obvious too. Slow says it is not exactly like that. Vision gets worked up thinking it is about being a guardian. Then he asks for a Royal Knight's recommendation. Slow knocks on his head. For starters, he is part of the Denny household, which Vision should know what it means. He tells him to practice his own magic instead of clinging to Slow. Vision agrees that it is more realistic than relying on connections, making Slow think that his flattery is all an act. Slow dreads the day to skip class and stay in Yulm for a while. Vision suspects that the headmaster gave him a special task, but Slow says no comment. He asks Vision if he knows of a safe place to stay in Yolam, but even he is not familiar with the area, although he still gives a couple of recommendations until Vision gives a more expensive option suddenly someone loudly echoes his words. Tina, who is gasping for air, arrives. She offers him a discount at the inn. He asks her to slow down. She informs him that Gordoni Inn is her home.